This is my second video over scientific notation. In the first one, we explained what it was, why it's important, and how do we convert between scientific notation and standard decimal notation. In this video, we're going to be taking scientific notation, and we're going to be doing normal math operations with it, meaning we're going to figure out how do we multiply two numbers that are in scientific notation, or how do we divide two numbers which are in scientific notation. Now, there's a more complicated way to go about this. And there is, of course, a very easy way to go about this, which is just typing it in your calculator. But we want to be able to do this without the calculator in the easiest format. So that's what I'm going to show you here. So starting with example one, the more complicated way to do this is to convert it into decimal notation. So I could write out what this number is, and I could write out what that number is. But that actually makes it very difficult to try and multiply without using the calculator. And we want to be able to do as much as we can without the calculator. So we rely back on the properties that we know about real numbers. That multiplication is commutative and associative, meaning that we can rearrange the multiplication in any format and it not adjust the answer. So here, this is 2.1 times 10 to the 6 times 3.8 times 10 to the negative 15. So this is all okay. multiplication in this example. So I can rearrange it in however format I want to. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my like pieces together. So I'm going to multiply 2.1 times 3.8. And yes, I will use my calculator for that, but you can do that by hand too. And the answer of that comes up to 7.98. And then I'm going to multiply my 10 to the 6 times 10 to the negative 15. And so the reason that this goes with the set of exponent videos is because I have the same basis, and I know that I can use my properties of exponents to combine these exponents here. So since I'm multiplying my bases, I add my exponents, 6 plus a negative 15, or you can think of it as 6 minus 15. And 6 minus 15 gives me negative 9. So that leaves me with a 10 to this negative 9. And the only time we get to use x to resemble times anymore is in scientific notation. Now, I want to go to the instructions here to point out something so you don't miss this in your homework. It specifies that your answers have to absolutely be written in scientific notation. So when you get to the end, make sure your answer is in that format before you submit that as your final answer. Meaning, is my decimal after the first digit? And in this example, it is. So since it's in scientific notation, that gives me my final answer. So notice we did most of this problem by hand with minimal use of the calculator, and it wasn't that difficult. Okay, let's look at example two. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can use the techniques that we learned in example one to use them here in example two. So this example is pretty much the same, except for this is a division problem. So I need to make sure to divide these numbers. But the easiest way to do this by hand is to put our like pieces together. So first I have 3.57 divided by 8.5. And I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator to give me that answer. And that gives me 0.42 times now my exponents over here. So I have 10 as a base, and now I need to figure out what to do with these exponents. Well, my properties say that I would subtract them. Now, be very careful in the subtraction here, because this really messes people up, because the negatives do something funky in this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and write it out. I have 17 minus a negative 3 in my denominator. So don't lose the double negatives here. Minus because I'm subtracting, and a negative 3 because it was negative 3. So what actually happens here is these two negatives cancel out. 
leaving me with 17 plus 3, or 10 to the 20th power down here. So be very careful in division problems to make sure to not lose any negatives. And if you have to write it out like I did over here, there's no harm in that. Now, going back to, again, instructions saying write this in scientific notation. So before I submit this as my final answer, I have to look and see where my decimal is. And notice, it's not after my first digit. That means I have to make some adjustments to this before I submit it as my final answer. So I need to move my decimal over here. That moves my decimal one unit, and that's going to change my exponent by one unit. Now, does that mean it's going to go to 21, or does that mean it's going to go to 19? And this is very confusing, and it's very easy to get mixed around. So I don't think about it as if I shift it this way, then I add or subtract, or if I shift it that way, then I blah, blah, blah. The way I do this is I mentally expand it, and so that leaves me less chances to try and get that memorization backwards. So I mentally expand this. If I took my decimal place, and if I were to shift it 20 units, that means I'm moving it 20 units to the right. But I know that my decimal needs to come back to be after my first digit here. So this line that I'm drawing back, is it a longer line than the first line that I drew over, or is it a shorter line? Well, the line that I drew back is a shorter line, which means I moved it back less places, which means my exponent is now going to become 19. So my final answer in this problem, because it's in scientific notation format, is 4.2 times 10 to the 19th. And you are always more than welcome to check these problems using your calculator. So I have finished all of my examples of scientific notation. The easy conversions like we did in video one or multiplying and dividing them like we did in this video here.